In this video, we will have a look at how you can use the login and registration form element from the Thrive Visual Editor. This element comes in handy when you want to offer your visitors a chance to sign up on your website or simply log in from the page on which this element is placed. So I have this page right here on my screen. I'm just going to go ahead and place the login and registration form onto my canvas. And then I'm going to show you how to use the options from the left sidebar. So let's pick a template. And now, as you can see, there's an entire list of options that I can use here in order to customize my element. So the first thing you can do here is to change the template. So this will take you right back to this library. So feel free to pick another one if you want to try out more designs. Now, keep in mind, though, that this is something you should do before bringing any changes to your currently existing template. So this is due to the fact that as soon as you load a new template from here, then any changes you've made previously will be lost. Next, here in the main options tab, you can start by deactivating this toggle if you want to change the main accent color of your form. And then from this button, you can start customizing how the element looks in various states. So besides the two most frequent ones, which are the login and registration states, you can also decide how the form should look like for those users who maybe have lost their password or for the ones who are already logged in. And you can see here that the form is connected by default to WordPress, so you don't need to additionally set up a WordPress account connection here. And then from here, you can change or remove the already existing fields or add new ones if you want. So if you want, for example, to connect your form to more than one service, you can do that from here. So for example, whenever someone registers for an account, that person can also be added to your autoresponder. However, in situations like this, you should also maybe add a GDPR checkbox as an additional field just to let the visitors know that they will be added to your mailing list once they submit this form. Lastly, while on this view, you can also bring changes to individual elements that make up this entire form. So you can edit elements such as text, buttons, icons. Feel free to play around and see what changes can be made while you are editing one of the available states. Now, going back to this view, let's have a closer look at the remaining options. So I'm going to keep this selection here throughout this tutorial, just to make sure that I cover the login and registration states at once. Now, if you want your form to show by default the login state, then you can select it from here. And the same goes for the situation in which you want to display the registration form by default. However, in both cases, you will still have this additional option here that allows you to also log in and register from the same view. And this is because I've selected here that I want my form to show both states. Next, you can use these buttons if you want to adjust the size and alignment of the form. And then from these two drop down lists, you can decide what should happen after the successful login and after the successful registration. So here you can see what options are available. Let's look first at the after successful login options. So you can either refresh the page or redirect the user to a custom URL. You can switch to the already logged in state and you can also redirect the user to the apprentice course index. This option will not be available in this case after the successful registration. So this is something that you can only use after the successful login. Lastly, in this advanced section, you can activate this toggle if you want to hide the form when the user is already logged in. Then from here, as always, you can use the remaining options if you want to adjust the layout and position, if you want to add background styles, corners, borders, shadows, and so on. Now, this quick overview will certainly help you if you want to find out about the basic options you can use when working with the login and registration form element. Now, I strongly recommend reading also the dedicated article as this goes into more detail about how to use all the available options.